Hey there everyone, it's Nicholas Merton here, the founder and CEO of Digifox, and I wanted to make a real quick walkthrough video on how to utilize a tool or platform known as Etherscan or etherscan.io. It's a free accessible website that allows you to see the current state of the Ethereum blockchain where all activities you engage in in the Digifox Pro wallet are recorded just like any other cryptocurrency wallet out there. Think of it as an open ledger where you can go to this website or other websites like it and see verifiable on-chain verifications that you've actually engaged in certain sending transactions, that you have received payments from other wallet addresses or engaged in other activities like swaps. You can see your actual existing balance in your wallet and along with that as well, be able to continuously come back to it in case you need to get any further confirmations in the future. Now, I not only want to showcase how you can utilize this with your Digifox Pro wallet today in order to confirm your on-chain balance and not just trust Digifox with what's being displayed in your wallet balance, just like you shouldn't with any other wallet. But outside of that as well, I want to showcase some edge cases where sometimes you may see the wrong numbers displayed with an Etherscan that actually aren't correct in the sense of verifying your on-chain balance. This can happen with rebasing currencies such as Ampleforth or Benchmark, and we'll talk about why this is. So let's go ahead and dive straight into it, guys. Now, I understand Etherscan might look a little bit overwhelming at first glance. You see all these different types of transactions and blocks that have random numbers or 0x hashes that just span out with letters and numbers. I don't want you guys to get overwhelmed about this. If you guys want to do a deeper dive in Etherscan, there's a lot of great walkthroughs online, but I want to showcase how you can use it with your Digifox Pro wallet. So the first thing you're going to want to do in order to engage with your Etherscan uh, platform is get your actual Digifox Pro address. You can do this by going to the Wallet tab, clicking on the Receive button, clicking on Digifox Pro or your Pro Wallet, and clicking on Share Address to actually copy the address to your clipboard. But once you've done that, you can go over to Etherscan on your mobile phone or desktop computer and simply paste it in. I've got a random address here in this case that I got off the Ethereum blockchain, but you can see that it's picking it up here. I can click Search and it will take me directly to this Ethereum wallet address. Now, the great thing about this is it doesn't really expose anything in this case. As we can see here, we don't know who this is or what address this is. All I know here though, and the reason why I selected this address is because it has a variety of different tokens and one of them being Appleforth that we'll take a look at in just a little bit. Now, there's a few things you should know about here. Again, this can be a little bit overwhelming at first, but I wanna go ahead and talk about how to actually kind of read transactions, how to uh, view your balance, as well as your specified Ether balance, the main currency of the Ethereum network and diving into individual token balances. So we're looking at this address, you can see it up here. We can see that this user has some amount of Ethereum valued at $220 at current market rates. And we can also see they have around $19,000 worth of different types of tokens. And when we click on this, we can see they have a variety of different cryptocurrencies here that we could um, explore or look at, right? Lots of different ERC-20 tokens. Now the first thing to talk about is the difference between um, transactions and ERC-20 token transfers. Or transactions. The difference here is that the transactions tab is only going to show you activities where you're engaging with the currency Ether. Right? Again, this is the major cryptocurrency Ether or Ethereum as you're probably familiar with it as. That's the native currency of the Ethereum network. And this will show you any type of transfers or claims or approvals where you have to utilize the Ethereum um, currency in this case, Ether. Right? And the second thing here that we want to look at is ERC-20 token transfers. This secondary tab will allow you to actually see any time you're sending, receiving, swapping, or engaging in any other form of activities with ERC-20 tokens. These are likely the tokens that you see within your swap tab. And they're anything outside of Ethereum that lives on the Ethereum blockchain and the ERC-20 format, right? Now, sometimes you will see a third category, right? And this third category, which is ERC-721, this is the standard for NFTs. And this is for digital collectibles, again, a topic for another time. We don't currently support this within Digifox, but it's something you might see in other wallet addresses just to avoid that confusion. Now, let's go ahead and actually dive into an example transfer here, right? So this is an example transfer from a user here who had sent uh, some of their Ampleforth governance token. This is the recent governance token that was launched for Ampleforth, the token we'll talk about later. This is a simple send transaction here. You can see the tokens were transferred from one address to another address. They were sending 100 tokens worth at the current value or the previous value, a couple thousand dollars. And you can see the network fee, the transaction fee that they paid on chain, the gas price, the cost per amount of data they were sending, 
and the ether price at the time. Just a lot of different metrics. The timestamp, the unique transaction hash, and this is an important thing to understand. This is the unique identifier for this transaction. You can see that it was successful, that it was included in a specified block on the Ethereum blockchain. And again, we can get any other details here that we really need to. Now this is really great here. We can actually dive into specific, uh, specific transactions, not just broad addresses. But we can also just get a quick simplified view here on the top banner of the screen by looking at the balance, the value of that Ether balance, and then of course, including the token balance as well. Now, one thing I wanna talk about here is that some of you will see, if you look at the actual token balances here, you'll see some amount of Ampleforth or benchmark tokens where not only the dollar value in this case, right, showcasing a high amount, but maybe that the token amount, this 3,920.405 continuing on valuation, that's the actual token amount, the amount of Ampleforth tokens that you probably own within your wallet, or at least Etherscan is stating that you own. But one thing that's important to know about is that if you actually click on the Ampleforth balance here, that will show you the proper amount. Now, I recommend you all do this if you're seeing a balance that's lower than what it's saying here in this list. In this example wallet address, it's showcasing the proper amount of Ampleforth. It's 3,920 Ample tokens. But in a lot of cases, it'll showcase a lower balance here, the real actual balance of Ample tokens or benchmark tokens that you own than what it's stating in that token list. There's no specific reason as to why this happened that we know of at the moment. But again, this is the actual balance if you filter by the token holder. Again, clicking on that token list where you see filter, and it should lead you to a screen where it says filter by token holder, the specified address, and that'll show you the reputable, true amount of Ample tokens. Right? Either skin as a platform is fantastic, but it has a few kinks and areas where it can improve on as time progresses and sometimes can lead to these edge cases where you don't see the real balance of your tokens, especially when it comes to rebasing coins. Now, I do wanna spend a little bit of time because it has been a question that's come up here about these rebasing coins, about why, uh, in this case, you can have an increase or decrease in your token supply. A lot of people feel like they've lost tokens in this case, or sometimes have more tokens than they originally bought. And the reason for this is actually due to the core mechanism of cryptocurrencies like Ampleforth. It's not in every single cryptocurrency, but in unique rebasing currencies like Ampleforth, they use a mechanism of rebasing to increase or decrease the supply of the currency in order to meet market demand and to mitigate uh, volatility in the market. Again, for further conversation on this, we can dive a little bit into the basics of this, but there's a ton of documentation online that you guys can read into if you're interested to learn about it. The simple explanation I would give here real quick is we can take a look, for example, at Ampleforth's verifiable on-chain supply. You can see here that there are periods of time where the supply goes up and down, up and down, and people are wondering how this actually is conducted, right? Why is it that Ampleforth's supply increased here from October of 2020 here towards December of 2020? And why did it decline here from August of 2020 down here to October of 2020? The reason for this is because Ampleforth is a rebasing currency that increases and decreases its supply for all of its holders automatically on chain. There's, there's no central team doing this, it's on chain. And it's done when the price deviates from its target peg of a dollar and one cent. So when Ampleforth's price, and we're taking a look at a dollar chart here, you can see that it always generally holds around a dollar for most of its history, but sometimes it deviates away. And in some cases can go very high up to two or three dollars. When the price sustains far away from its market peg of a dollar, and you can see this was back in late June 2020, we can see that the Ampleforth network automatically starts to create new Ample tokens. And when the price starts to deviate back down below the peg, down towards 50, 60 cents, we can see here that during the same period of time throughout July and August, we start seeing a decline in the supply as there is no longer a need or demand for supply, and in fact, probably an overabundance of Ampleforth tokens on the market that isn't able uh, to meet or lead up to the amount of demand in the market. There's too much supply in the market. So hopefully that makes sense in regards to understanding the rebase mechanism. And again, it is not in this case a concern about Digifox as well. This is automatically done on chain, and it's a core mechanism of cryptocurrencies like Ampleforth and Benchmark. So I hope that clarifies things and provides a bit of clarity for some of you who are experiencing those edge cases where when you look at that token list, it's not displaying the proper balance when you click here and see Ampleforth. Um, so again, just wanted to clear that, clarify that for you guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to check out our abundance of different materials and resources uh, and education materials here on the Digifox website or YouTube channel. I wanna thank you guys for letting me ramble on here today. I hope it answered some questions for you all and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.